What's in a name, Shakespeare once asked, that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Now, what the bard is so eloquently posing is that what something is matters a whole lot more than its arbitrary label. And of course, as any student of 16th century British literature will tell you, Shakespeare was obviously musing on Yoshi's Island. And what is in a name? Well, in this case, there's Super Mario World 2. A pesky little phrase that carries all sorts of connotations. Cape feathers, secret exits, fire flowers, the, the whole nine mushrooms. But as Shakespeare once wrote, that name, Super Mario World 2, that's not important. In fact, it's not even really accurate. I mean, Yoshi's Island is as much a sequel to Super Mario World as it is to freaking Mega Man. You get the sense when playing Yoshi's Island that the words Super Mario World 2 were only attached to the title for the purposes of marketing. I mean, perhaps the game was conceptually born as a sequel to 1991's Super Mario World, but by the time this game was finished, it came out as a whole new masterpiece all its own. Yoshi's Island acts as a sort of prequel to the Super Mario series. Mario and Luigi are mere newborns in this game. Their days of saving princesses and growing mustaches are years away. But for those days to be realized, the Yoshis will have to reunite the separated infant heroes and save them from Bowser's villainous grasp. And honestly, casting is virtually the only thing that Yoshi's Island shares in common with the Super Mario games. The presence of the plumbers and the Yoshis and lots of familiar villains. But beyond that, if you get into the gameplay mechanics and art design and level layouts, you see that Yoshi's Island really is the standalone game that Nintendo has since deemed it. Speaking of those gameplay mechanics, you play Yoshi's Island as a series of Yoshis who are carrying Mario to his baby brother through a kind of relay system. Each level is played by a different Yoshi, but their abilities are the same. You can swallow enemies with their elongated tongues, just as in Super Mario World, but what makes Yoshi's Island different, and ultimately what defines its gameplay, is that you can also... digest them. You see, eating enemies causes Yoshi to lay an egg, which then serves as a projectile weapon. Much of Yoshi's Island's gameplay consists of digesting lesser foes to collect eggs, and subsequently bombarding more daunting enemies with a veritable polka dot omelette. It's a very fun mechanic, and it also makes Yoshi's Island feel distinct from the Super Mario titles, as do plenty of other things. Perhaps most notably, you have to keep Mario on your back at all times. Touching an enemy causes Yoshi to drop the little plumber, and if you don't recover him before the timer ticks away, it's lights out for baby Mario. But a more obvious deviation is the game's visual style. After a bit of an internal dispute over the game's look, Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto revamped Yoshi's Island to give it a hand-drawn appearance, as if it had been done with crayons and markers. To this day, the game's style is as vibrant as ever. Yoshi's Island is a beautiful game that's as memorable to look at as it is to play. It plays different, it looks different, it is different. And to uh, paraphrase Shakespeare, that's what's important about Yoshi's Island. With its distinct look and gameplay that emphasizes puzzle solving and item collecting, this game really set itself apart in 1995, and it's since become regarded by some as one of the greatest 2D platformers of all time. So call it a sequel if you must, but what Yoshi's Island really is, is a 16-bit masterpiece all its own.